Welcome to another edition of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement. I'm here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. Our next guest is convinced that fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas have an extended future. So let's welcome Alex Epstein. He is the author of Fossil Future. Welcome to the program. Uh, thanks for having me. I guess the first question is maybe just for our audience sake, run through your argument in favor of extended fossil fuel usage. Sure. I mean, the starting point of the argument is that when we're thinking about global issues like climate and energy and that kind of thing, our number one goal should be what I call advancing human flourishing on Earth. So we want the Earth to be the best possible place for human beings to have long lives, healthy lives, opportunity-filled lives. And the reason I stress that is there are actually some people in this discussion who don't really put human beings first, who actually in some ways idolize an Earth that's as human free as possible. So you often hear of the idea of let's minimize our impact. You know, our footprint is too big. The earth has too many people. And I, I reject this kind of thinking. I'm very pro-human, which doesn't at all be, mean being anti the rest of nature. I love the rest of nature, but I love dealing with it in a way that benefits uh, humans. I don't want, you know, my child to be eaten by another organism. I don't like malarial mosquitoes. You know, I love dogs. I love polar bears if we can fence them off et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So kind of my background is philosophy. And so first I'm looking at the world and energy and climate from a human flourishing perspective. And then from that perspective, I think what we need to do is when we're looking at different forms of energy, we need to look at both benefits and side effects with precision. So I find what often happens is when people talk about fossil fuels, they just talk about negative climate side effects and mm -hmm. actually they tend to exaggerate them and they tend to ignore the benefits of fossil fuels. So my contention in fossil future is, if you look at the world from a human flourishing perspective and you carefully weigh the benefits and side effects of fossil fuels, you conclude that the world needs more fossil fuels. So would you say that you reject the scientific consensus on climate change? No, I mean, I think, I think there's ambiguity about what that consensus is. And I think with all of these things, we need to be much more precise. So even the term climate change is a very vague term. Mm -hmm. It equivocates between man-made change and non-man-made change. And it equates kind of moderate change and extreme change. And so I think there is a kind of consensus that human beings have some non-trivial impact on climate. And that's contributed to the one degree C warming uh, about what well, you know, more or less of the last century plus and that that can be expected to continue, and that warming has certain kinds of other climate effects, actually positive and negative, but on the negative side, all things being equal, sea level rises or increased heat waves. On the positive side, fewer cold-related deaths. Cold-related deaths are a huge problem, not just in Canada, but actually on every continent uh, on Earth. And then there are other kinds of climate effects as well. So I, I think what happens with how people think about climate science is they have an, an exaggerated negative view of it, is part of it. And then they also ignore the positives that come with our greenhouse gas emissions, particularly all the energy that we get from fossil fuels that we wouldn't otherwise get. And it's particularly important on the issue of climate because energy is the most important thing in terms of the livability of climate. I mean, Canadians should know this just in terms of dealing with cold. Like so much of Canada would be so hard to live in uh, if you didn't have enormous amounts of energy to keep yourselves warm when it's cold. But you see this around the earth, like mm -hmm. the places that are safest from climate are the places that use the most energy because they can irrigate to alleviate drought. They can build sturdy buildings. They can be resilient. And, and one finding that I've shared widely now that, that now at least politicians in America are talking about a lot is that the rate of death from climate related disasters like storms and floods and extreme temperatures has actually gone down by 98% over the last century. And mm -hmm. what this shows is that our ability to use energy, mostly from fossil fuels, to what I would call master or neutralize climate danger, so to take climate danger and make it much less dangerous, that ability has far outpaced any new climate challenges from rising CO2. So I agree that rising CO2 leads to certain impacts, and some of those impacts will be challenges, some will be benefits, but our ability to master climate is far more important, and I think that's what's getting ignored. The problem is not, quote, climate change denial, it's actually climate mastery denial. Interesting. And of course, uh, 
there's a whole industry, uh, speaking of industries involved in, uh, in climate change and, uh, and, and making the argument. We're going to continue with our guest, Alex Epstein. He's the author of Fossil Future. After these brief messages, we'll be back after those. Please stay with us. <laughs> 